Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the Imperial Destroyer mod. We have been able to take Calcutta, and since then, uh, the French actually did land over here. So we were spec I was speculating a little bit where the fleet were going to land their troops, and they did in fact land them over here, marched in, and took the uh, town. But as you can see, I kill or destroyed the fort beforehand, so they are left in the open as it were, and who knows what the armed populace of the region will do once they attack. Interestingly enough, just kind of the boost the AI gets, um, as soon as they took over it went from, it's. I mean when I had it was like minus four or something, as soon as the French took over, plus 15 for uh, the uh, the low the lower classes, which is kind of and um, and with that in mind, it was kind it kind of makes it even more impressive that I was actually able to even uh, force the French into a revolution like that just because of bankruptcy and other things. But anyways, the French have been able to take that, so they've started up. The very short-lived col colony of uh, uh, French India. They'll be kicked out pretty darn soon. We've got some extra troops being brought in from different sides. However, I am starting to uh, run out of money for new troops. So we'll have to do with what we have. Luckily for us, though, the uh, Mughal Empire. The mighty, I must say the quite mighty Mughal Empire. Um, they do have money and resources. I'm not entirely sure where their armies are at, um, but they haven't really shown themselves, so we have uh, been spared a lot of that. But hopefully we'll be able to take them on, we'll kick out the French, and then we'll start heading inland in here. But uh, for now, we'll have to rest as this army needs to recover. Uh, as it's broken down. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over here where we actually have two forces ready to land. So the two main armies, or the main army that was split in two, is now being sent one force. is going to be sent here to New Orleans to attack that and the French garrison and take that. I was hoping to uh, sue for peace by giving this back to the French. At this point, I'm not sure that's what I'm going to do, because I definitely don't want a uh, random French province still remaining in India uh, in case a war erupts again with the French. And down here we have another force, the other half of that army, which is set to land in Cuba, where there currently are, uh, in fact, no troops to defend this area and only two garrison troops will be spawned so that's quite nice and of course uh, we saw off the Spanish over here I was gonna move the extra unit over here but of course this island is now being blocked by French Navy so we haven't been able to get to there as of yet and we do have this French force, which is kind of, it looks poised to be marching over into our territory. Uh, now I do, it spawns quite a few units here. I think it's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six garrison units will be spawned with an additional two militia. And to make sure that we're able to hold it, I am recruiting one howitzer. That will sit inside the fort, and I think that will be plenty enough to hold off against the militia. And so it'll be a bloody fight for sure to hold on to the province, but I'm sure we will hold on to it as well. It's only militia that they've recruited. The French are though speeding up their recovery pretty darn quickly as they've been building all over the place to build up their country in just kind of a almost uh, I would say amazing if it weren't for the, the fact that they are my enemies um, that they've been able to build it up in this fashion um, obviously a lot of it's because the uh, home province is very like the amount of wealth 
that's in here means that they can tax it at a very high level. I mean, 14,000 out of just a single province. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I even get that much out of all um, my provinces. I mean, you know, I get 28, so. But they get 14 out of 1, so that's a lot. Uh, but let's go ahead and conduct these naval assaults. This one, as it's not conducted through a port, will mean that we'll just land the force. And then it will be marched. The I'm thinking the um, two spies should be set ashore to figure out what the French have. But then also the Spanish. So far, my idea is just to take the Spanish islands and then go and reclaim this area, but that's about it. I'm not intending on invading like Mexico or going any further in there. Um, could be, I mean what I could do is I split off one part of it, but I don't know if I want to dig that deep into the Spanish colonies. So that's what's going on right now. Obviously, yes, I need to land the force over here as well. So I'm going to land that. Um, let's land it right, just right there. I don't think the enemy will attack, and even if they do, they're, they're going to die. And then right after that, we're going to block in the port and seize all commodities coming out of uh, Louisiana. So lower Louisiana, upper Louisiana. With that, it's time to end turn, and we'll see Havana surely will fall, and this will also fall. Nice, it's actually, it'll be a field battle because there's no castle here. Wonderful. With that, let's end turn and see what our enemies will come up with. Interesting, almost immediately we're thrown into the battle at New Orleans. There were more troops hiding in the wetlands around it. Quite interesting, an additional 3,000 men has appeared around the town to reinforce it. Which means that the enemy actually ends up slightly outnumbering us. So that's quite interesting, like the, uh, the French were lure waiting for us almost, or luring us to attack here, uh, pretending to be weak when in fact they had the, quite the force. Now a lot of it is militia, but they do also have some units of line. Like we can see, um, let's see which army was it? Colonial line. It, yeah, it's all colonial line. I thought it, I thought I saw like a proper regiment. Anyways, let's go ahead and fight for New Orleans. Here's my setup for the battle. Actually not. Uh, the howitzer should definitely be moved back. But here we go. So uh, in the center I've got the Grenadiers in the back with the Jacobites in the center up uh, in front. Then on either side we've got infantry. Uh, three units of infantry on either side, flanking him with, I believe, yes, on the right side. We've got the Valdek anchoring on the right. And then I've got cavalry on this side, the uh, horse guards on the left. We've got Jaeger in front. And uh, this time around I've switched it so the bomb is facing, actually facing us. The reason why I've done this is because... Um, it's a little bit different how the, they mod the bombs, but the thing is the bomb usually doesn't kill that many. But if you turn it around like this, that means the bomb will actually go off. Save multiple units come walking, it will actually go off right underneath the unit and will cause more damage than if you do it the other way. Because the intention is that, you know, it will spray stuff on the stuff. It will spray, you know, splinters and stuff on the enemy and kill them that way. But if you do it this way, there's a hi higher chance of the enemy unit actually being on top of the bomb when it actually goes off, causing more casualties. With that said, we start off in this more defensive position. We'll see what the French do. 
I kind of I want them to walk onto the bomb, but that is also kind of boring to wait for the enemy to come to us. Um, okay, so I can see that one of the reinforcements is coming in through here. So we got cavalry and militia. Is that the bigger? Of course, the bigger um, units are coming in as reinforcements. So what we could do is we could then try to we'll relocate the army to face that side. And as we do that, the units up here would actually be possibly marching on to the, um, to the bombs. So we'll start by turning the entire line that way. We'll get the Jacobites, Grenadiers, and then we'll get the other three infantry, infantry units turning over here. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that at first. Um, not that I think that it, it affects my speaking as much, but I am a little bit... I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say, t like, too rattled, but... Um, uh, what ha what has happened is that just before I came home here to actually record this episode, I was uh, over at my parents, and it turned out that my mum's neighbours, which are complete white trash, um, they their dog somehow escaped, no surprise. So and obviously, as you know, they're white trash, so what are they, what kind of dog do they have? Obviously it's a Rottweiler. Obviously they cannot control it. And so uh, the dog got loose and it killed my mom's cat. So um yeah. Not that I am like not that I dislike the cat or anything, but or that I'm particularly just because of the cat, but the thing is, like, if you if you make my mum sad, then you make me sad. So, so that that's a bit upsetting, and also because like it's it's so unnecessary and it's so typical of such absolute like white trash people. And it's like, uh, sure, it's it's not the dog's fault; it's the owner's because they're shit, but, like, if we're honest here, what, c like, it's, it's not like, uh, it's, uh, Anne-Marie, 62 years old, that gets a Rottweiler. It's always shit people, isn't it? It's always the kind of white trash, absolute, you know, like, they can't control it whatsoever. It's always those people. And so, it's so unnecessary to do that, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it pisses me off, but then it's not much, uh, like, you can't really do anything because it's, it would only make it worse, like, even though, you know, you get that anger and you want to just, like, fucking... You want to do something, but let's not incriminate myself. No. Not that I would go that far. Pretty good battle here. Battle lines drawn. We uh, we are doing quite well. Very open field here. And the French coming on in a nice style. We've got this nice trade of fire, and now they're starting trading cannon shot with us as well. And the flank is being held up because uh, these guys are fighting with the Jaegers. And uh, they are starting to push through though. That's one of the things about this mod. Is of course that it's originally set with so few uh, bullets for the infantry and stuff. And it's kind of you know coded into the playstyle. 
of the AI that they um, are very aggressive. Like, they will charge in. Okay, as my Jaegers pull back, I'll have the lines here. Open fire, very close range on the enemy. As they're so close to my bomb, and I really kind of want that to go off. I'm actually going to pull these guys back further, and we're going to pull the Jaegers back further. I just want the enemy to walk onto my bombs. And then we'll make, like, a sh the bit, all my cavalry over there form into a real thundering fist that will move around. So Jaegers, side of the hill here, be able to hold these guys off. And then we'll see if my bomb actually works. I'm a little bit worried here, actually, because uh, splinters might still, you know, be thrown out from this bomb all over the place. I'm gonna do this. Obviously, that means that this guy can get attacked from two sides, but I don't think the AI will do it that way. So we're pulling. Oh, he's coming close now. And they're just kind of in the range of the bomb. The bomb is right there. We're almost standing on top of it. Come on, you only need to go a little bit closer. Let's see. There we go. Bomb went off. Boom. And as it went off right in the back, I'm sure we got a lot more kills than what if we had done it the other way around. Okay, so lots of French troops getting shot out here. Keeping a lot in the back, so they got an additional four units being moved forward. That bomb definitely took the wind out of that attack. And the enemy is being held back by the Jaegers. Um, doing good work, holding them off. And now this one is getting sandwiched, but I'm, because I'm pretty sure this unit is now firing into the back of this. Um, reorganize the Grenadiers. Yeah, we're gonna have to withdraw this one. It's getting attacked from multiple angles now. We've got, uh, Dragoons firing into up the flank. These two, and then this one. Lots of enemies retreating over on this side. Which opens up for my cavalry to march out and start doing some work, good work there. This one's splintered up. So what I want to do is again to get these three to kind of wheel up to face the enemy there. Especially as the Jacobites have taken quite a bit of damage. Oh, I was going to send this guy in his charge. But, uh, oof! Nasty shot there by the French. Um, you'll just be in the back supporting the Jacobites. The enemy is coming really close there. Rather than have you then been at charge that way, just move to support back here. And now the Jaegers alone, I'm pretty sure, are able to take those. So the cavalry is out in the position. Let's have the regimental horse going that way, and then the horse guard will go and take those guys. Okay, t I think it's time for my artillery to hold fire. Because the enemy is coming way too close. Let's let's throw the men into a charge. I'll hold this one to fire at uh, the flank there and also the enemy cavalry. So th the cavalry unit just rode over the enemy over there. Didn't I tell you to hold fire? I guess I wasn't clear on that point. And then enemy cannons dead. Horses now sandwiching uh, the enemy regiment. And I'm ordering my infantry to continue the bayonet charge through there. Cavalry on both sides of the dragoons. Destroying them. Um, can I turn? 
guess we can turn the cannons to f shoot at what's left here. Jaegers able to hold off and hold that flank. Suffered quite a bit of casualties though. Let's go ahead and redirect some units. We don't have to chase these guys down completely. We are of course not Spanish. And uh, we're not, we do not need to completely annihilate those units. You will advance straight forward. Taking quite a while to take out this uh, cavalry unit. Uh, 65 men. Horse, and I mean, I've got my horse guard unit fighting them. All right. Let's have the Jaegers move out after them. Let's see if we can't find. Shoot down that 52nd Colonial Regiment. Really interesting battle here with the fact that they uh, basically lured us into the swamp in a way. But we were able to find a good position. And uh, they didn't. You can hold here and open fire. Let's see. The howitzer kind of swivelers around and fires into the woods now. It does nothing. This ba battle is dragging on just because of this unit. But I mean, we can see here now uh, the uh, as clear as day. Who has won the battle? New Orleans has fallen and we have taken control of uh, the lower Louisiana. We'll move in. Uh, why aren't you shooting? Does that mean that I get control of the... Uh... When thinking about New Orleans, I, I, I came to think about... The, um, Kind of hard to pronounce name. Artushun or something like that. Really cool history channel um, that deals in a lot of... And I, and I recently actually watched his history on New Orleans and how they settled it and then the, the uh, French period and the, uh, the Spanish period and so on. So ve very interesting. Definitely... Uh, something I'd recommend his channel, but it's kind of hard to pronounce. Artu I think it's uh, like something Ar Artushin it's difficult. But I think I I usually usually when it when it's stuff like this, like people kind of uh, people who are interested in history usually kind of know even um, these smaller channels. He's also done some really interesting, like, some of the really interesting videos are the ones on, um, what was the King Rupert's War? Or something about, you know, stuff up in sort of in New England, very early colonial stuff. Uh, very interesting the way he tells it. And, uh, really enjoy his content. With that, let's go ahead and finally destroy the French and start the, uh, the Dutch period of New Orleans. There'll be uh, clogs everywhere. Clog the channel. And here's the result of the battle. So the French actually deployed about 400 men more than us. 4,440 compared to 4,090. The enemy lost more or less everything. Only 224 men make it out compared to us, which lose 1,421, leaving still 2,669 soldiers to continue the campaign. Um, well, General's bodyguard managed to kill one person somehow. God knows how, how, who or what. Jacobite Scots are the ones that kill the most. Maybe not surprised. That surprising as they were placed in the center. Then we've got the Swiss infantry, Dutch Swiss infantry, Swiss uh, mercenaries, Jaegers ending up very high as well here with uh, scoring 351 kills. Cannons nowhere to be seen, way down here. I thought we had a pretty good cannon position, um, but I guess the enemy was shot down in the center more so than taken out by 
cannon. Really, it's the howitzer that's the killer compared to the uh, straight ball cannons. But there we have it, victory. New Orleans will just will just have just walk straight in, as it were. Right, we're back after that end turn. Of course, the immediately immediately upon starting the turn, we've got attacked by the French down here in New Orleans. Well, now we'll be able to finish it by marching in. No fort or anything. I'm sure I'm going to regret it because I'm going to lose too many men in the after assault, but I'm still going to do it. 364, it wasn't that bad. I thought it's going to be a lot higher. Guess it because there's no fort in New Orleans. Uh, we're going to go ahead and occupy. Region captured, Lower Louisiana. Trained gain to general to command fighting. Th that, I've, I've mentioned it before, but it's always so weird. Like, you play these mighty battles, and, you know, it's really close. You end up winning, or, you know, another battle where you just slaughter tons of enemies and stuff. Never get much trains of that. You out resolve a little shit fortress or a little shit battle out in nowhere. The general's like, just pour medals on himself. Like, uh, like he's the fucking greatest. I've been swearing too much in this episode, have I not? Uncharacteristically. Um, let's see. There's quite a bit of unhappiness here. Foreign occupation. I'm, that means we're going to be stuck here for a while. Are all towns... Yeah, all towns are done for. So what I could do is I could turn one of the mills here. So with two water-powered cloth mills. I don't need two, so we could build a, a whorehouse instead. Um, wait, I should have actually checked where that was. Where did they influence me? Wait, are... The trade agreement with Poland was broken for some reason. Okay, so we have the possibility of trading with someone else if Poland doesn't want to. Prussia. Prussia could be good. Prussia as an ally would be very good. Savoy, they don't like us. Portugal doesn't like us. Especially since I might be able to take their possessions in India. Knights of St. John doesn't like us either. Austria? Austria doesn't like us anymore. I gave you Bosnia Herzegovina. Oh, it's just Bosnia. Um, Ottoman Empire. Hostile, but I can trade with them if I want. Kind of interesting there. Um, um, side note. Uh... We had someone in the family travel to that area. I think it was not Bosnia, but I think it was Montenegro. It's further down there. Um, and my 97-year-old grandma said, "Oh, I wonder if they're doing well in Yugoslavia." Like, grandma, that uh, that no longer exists. That country. But maybe on their home way home by the train, they might pass through Czechoslovakia. Um, Let's go ahead and get this army rolling again. And with that, we should be able to do this. And take Cuba. So they have two garrison regiments. Because they're hats, they have those small hats. They look kind of puny and small. Like it's pygmies controlling here. Anyways. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. 400 men to take this castle, but looks like a lot of it was done on the Jaegers, and those are cheap to replace. So, within one turn, we have taken two provinces. We have taken... Oof. Oh, that is actually a quite a big fleet. Uh, because it has... Uh, it's 40 gun ships. So it's not as... I was fearful that that was the 56... The thing is, though, this fleet is only being carried by a 28-gun frigate, so... Oh, there actually is a Spanish force down here. Pirates. New Spanish militia. Colonial infantry. Pikemen. They still have pikemen. They're really outdated. Um, I guess they haven't, because they haven't really been needing to fight anyone over these colonies ever. 
So that's why it's a little bit rustic, as it were, out here. Um, let's move this one to port. And then, oh, look at that. Veracruz core. Right, we'll see about fighting. I mean, surely these will try to march and retake Havana. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I think next time, though, we'll be back in India to fight there. But with that said, I'm going to end the episode right here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.